The fact that Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton will reprise their roles as Batman in the Flash movie is a pretty significant move for the project. Additionally, Robert Pattinson's Batman could arrive thanks to the Flash's multiverse plot. But will the Caped Crusader be in the main DCEU timeline? In today's video, we'll look at how the Flash movie might just have two or more versions of Batman on screen at the same time. First off, Ben Affleck's return as the DCEU's main Batman in the Flash explained. The revelation that Ben Affleck will come back as the DCEU's Batman in the Flash was, to put it mildly, an unexpected development in a year that has been nearly non-stop with shocks for all things DC. Before Affleck made it official in early 2019, there have been persistent whispers of his impending exit from the DC Extended Universe. Affleck's time as Batman appears to be over, making the significance of his comeback for The Flash even greater. Bruce Wayne will have designed Barry's outfit in the movie, according to Andy Muschietti, who made the announcement at DC Fandom. This provides some evidence that the the role of Affleck's Batman could be somewhat larger than, or at least different from, that of Bruce bookending the story in the comics. However, The Flash is an inspiration for Flashpoint rather than a direct adaptation of it. Of course, unlike his appearances in Batman v Superman and Justice League, Affleck's portrayal of Batman in this movie will likely be less prominent. Having said that, given the well-known back and forth regarding Affleck's earlier departure, the fact that he is showing up at all, in addition to his Batman role in designing Barry's new suit, also suggests that there's more to his role in The Flash than has been made public, especially given what is known about the film and the other actors who are in it. Next, The Flash movie features Michael Keaton's return as Batman. The prospect of Michael Keaton also returning was a development that wasn't on the radar, no matter how unexpected Ben Affleck's comeback as Batman in The Flash may have been. Although there have been suggestions that Keaton's Batman will have a function in the DC Extended Universe similar to Nick Fury, it's unclear exactly what that job will entail in the film. At the same time, Keaton's presence presence may be used as a kind of covert pilot in a version of Batman Beyond. However, the significance of Keaton's Dark Knight's appearance in the film for DC as a multiverse is equally significant as what party plays in The Flash. With the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths and the return of Keaton's Batman decades after his last appearance in Batman Returns, the canonicity of every DC movie and TV adaptation within the multiverse has officially been established. The fact that Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are no longer connected to Keaton's Batman Batman movies, proves that they may not all be canon in their own realms, but that is ultimately irrelevant. There is now no reason why the same can't happen with characters from other realities of DC's multiverse, and this naturally extends to other Batman actors. If the Michael Keaton Batman can not only return, but be seen in a film featuring characters from a completely different continuity, there is now nothing to stop it from happening. Also, will Robert Pattinson's Batman appear in The Flash? The Flash is the ideal setting for a crossover, but it doesn't seem likely that Robert Pattinson since drastically altered Batman will show up. Batman's marketing makes it apparent that Matt Reeves is approaching the series in a very particular way. Additionally, WB and DC appear to be delighted with the Batman-focused universe he's creating. Two HBO Max spin-off projects are now in production, and more may follow the Batman, which will undoubtedly receive a sequel film. Batman is free to use its creative freedom without having to worry about any previous or forthcoming DCEU movies because of its unique continuity. Perhaps while it appears doubtful that Batman played by Robert Pattinson, would appear in The Flash. It's always possible that WB and DC will cram a cameo into the movie at some time, or even into the post-credits. This would establish a link between Pattinson and the core DCEU, enabling the studios to later close the gap if they so choose. The demand for Pattinson to play Batman in the DCEU is sure to grow as time goes on, because fans are already quite charmed by his portrayal. But a hint at that prospective crossover would be better left for later, given both The Flash and The Batman are the foundations of the new series. Finally, other Batman actors who might reappear in The Flash. The multiverse is now essential to The Flash movie's plot, that it almost has the feel of Into the Spider-Verse with the Caped Crusader. Now that it stars not one, but two formerly retired Batman actors, The Flash may now bring in any additional Batman actors it wants, since Affleck and Keaton are back. The only question is how they would advance the plot, and whether the performers, and perhaps the filmmakers involved, would be interested. Theoretically, Val Kilmer's Bruce Wayne might make Make an appearance on his own, especially since it's now known that this version of Batman differs from Keaton. Since Affleck is playing the Dark Knight in The Flash, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who briefly played Thomas Wayne in Batman v Superman's premiere, can now play Batman from an alternate universe that Barry unintentionally creates in Flashpoint. Due to the Dark Knight trilogy's grounded and solitary approach under Christopher Nolan and Matt Reeves's upcoming Batman, Christian Bale and Robert Pattinson are definitely off the table. However, if there is a wish to reference George Clooney, 
Clooney's Bruce Wayne as well, then Kilmer and Clooney's two parallel Bruce Waynes would just be a retcon away. Kilmer and George Clooney portraying the same Batman would also probably write off any potential appearance by the latter. We can't wait to see who ends up making an appearance in The Flash. Now, let's talk about how Supergirl has replaced Superman in one key way. First off, why Supergirl has Superman's Flashpoint role in The Flash movie? Barry Allen doesn't have abilities, and the Justice League doesn't exist in the DC Universe, where Flashpoint is set in an alternate reality. Superman is on Earth, but Barry later learns that he is feeble, because he has likely spent his whole time here in a government prison. Supergirl being half-charged would make sense, if The Flash is accurately interpreting the Flashpoint tale, placing her in the same position as Superman in the comics. After eventually gaining his freedom in Flashpoint, Superman helps Barry after regaining control of his abilities. In the movie, Supergirl is most likely the one who experiences all of this. Supergirl definitely takes the place of Superman in the narrative, but The Flash's real-world production is most likely the cause of the transition. Henry Cavill appeared to have left the DC Universe at the time the film was being produced, so the role would either need to be recast or Superman would have to be completely replaced. Despite Black Adam's confirmation that Cavill's Superman is returning, it's too late for him to have a significant part in The Flash. Therefore, Supergirl was cast in his place. Although she has never been in the DC Universe, the government captivity plot of Flashpoint provides the ideal justification for her absence. Next, Cavill's return could lead to a Superman and Supergirl team-up in the DCEU. It's possible that Sasha Kaye's Supergirl is from a different reality than Henry Cavill's Superman, as suggested by Barry Allen's journey through the multiverse in The Flash. It's simple to imagine how Supergirl might have replaced Cavill if he had not made a comeback to the big screen. Superman's comeback, nevertheless, doesn't imply Supergirl should be put on hold. Now that the Man of Steel is returned, The Flash could just move Supergirl over to the main DCEU realm, rather than retconning her into being the only Super in the DCEU. Then, Supergirl can be a part of Superman's subsequent DC Extended Universe appearance, where the two heroes might connect over their shared origins and similar superpowers. Henry Cavill's return means that the DCEU won't have to explain why Supergirl wasn't there in earlier films or why Superman wasn't present in a potential Supergirl movie set. In a potential Supergirl movie set in a different time frame, the cancellation of Batgirl appears to be a bad omen for other Warner Bros. projects. After all, if they can scrap a finished film, chances are that other projects in the works won't fare any better. Henry Cavill's absence needs to be filled, and a Supergirl spin-off following The Flash would have been the perfect solution. Supergirl could have continued Superman's legacy while also giving the DCEU a new Kryptonian hero to root for. And lastly, why Supergirl may be cancelled. The DC Extended Universe underwent a relaunch thanks to The Flash, which used its Flashpoint-inspired plot as a natural transition into a new era for the series. After Zack Snyder left the project, a continuity altering film would introduce Supergirl as a potential successor for Superman and establish Michael Keaton as a new version of Batman. Because Ben Affleck was no longer playing Batman and Henry Cavill's future as Superman was uncertain. Even though Keaton would take over as the Dark Knight, Batgirl would be featured in her own movie and might eventually be the star of the DCEU's Gotham City escapades. The cancellation of Batgirl and Ben Affleck's alleged return as Batman indicates that the post-merger DCEU may no longer be adhering to this strategy. And if Supergirl is intended to replace The Flash as the main Kryptonian hero as the DCEU. Her standalone movie will likely also be scrapped. Although Sasha Kaye's Supergirl has already been featured in the Flash teasers, her standalone movie may still be in the early stages of development, making its cancellation less abrupt than that of the Batgirl solo movie. Supergirl has the capacity to produce intriguing stories that are part of the core DCEU. As a more typical Kryptonian, Kara might experience problems with her lack of free will because she was created by Kryptonian civilization to serve a particular societal function. Kara's standalone film might be successful incorporated into the larger DCEU, thanks to her potential friendships with Barry Allen and her cousin Kal-El. Can't wait to see the future of Supergirl, and hopefully it's a good one. And with that, that's a wrap for this video. Which Batman are you looking forward to seeing the most? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.